thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sure the skirt gives it away. Um, <laughs> Your Royal Highness, Lords, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow scholars. My name is Robert Neal. My Nuffield study topic is electronic identification in the cattle industry, EID. Your Royal Highness, cast back your memory to um, 2013 March, the Farmers Club, when we first met. You came to me and said, have you made a mistake? Would you not be better studying IED, um, improvised explosive device? <laughs> First of all, I would like to thank my sponsors, the Royal Highland and Agricultural Society of Scotland. Also, a big thank you to Nuffield Farming Scholarship Trust. And also to Anne Beckett. Thank you very much for editing my report and getting it published. Countries I visited. 78 days out of the country, visiting Canada, Argentina, Australia, New Zealand, Brussels. 21 flights. 61,000 air miles, 8,000 road miles, and one speeding ticket. <laughs> <clears throat> Jan July 2013, in my first destination, Canada, where I visited the state of Alberta and British Columbia. I visited feedlots, auctions, ranches, breed societies, government organizations, and the Calgary Stampede. When I arrived, it had been one of the wettest times on record. The Calgary Stampede was under threat to run due to the amount of rain, and parts of Alberta were cut off due to flooding. At this point, I thought I'd made a mistake. I hired a car, but I should have hired a boat. <laughs> Electronic identification had been compulsory since 2006 in Canada. One large feedlot I visited was handling 45,000 head of cattle. They were using EID to its full potential. Weighing and recording data through state-of-the-art handling systems with a hydraulic crush and hydraulic race, which could be adjusted to the size of the animal. All of these yards were designed using the Temple Grandin template. And for somebody who loves welding, manufacturing, and making things, to me, this was like a five-year-old child on a Christmas morning. Each animal was handled every 45 days, so they handled 1,000 head of cattle per day through these systems. The manager said to me, um, they were using female staff to do all this because they had a better understanding of animal welfare and handling of these animals. So after Canada, it was back home to do harvest, autumn work, get livestock settled in to um, their winter ro rations and feed. Um, and then I headed to, um, Oh, I took in the Calgary Stampede in the day off, by the way, and that was, that was a fantastic experience. Flashed my Nuffield badge, got in there, got behind the scenes. Two weeks earlier, that um, rodeo stadium had, was under two feet of water, and, and the residents of Calgary had decided that they must get that show back on the road because that brought in a revenue for the next 12 months. So I take my hat off to them. They did a fantastic job. Argentina. This was my next destination, probably the most challenging. A Scotsman who spoke no Spanish. There was no EID in Argentina. In fact, there was very little tagging of animals taking place in some parts of the country. When I arrived in Argentina, the police were on strike. There was rioting, looting. Two supermarkets were burnt down. So this was a challenge for me. Again, I visited ranches, sales yards, government bodies attending an NFU meeting with a translator. And they were fishing um, ideas from me because they wanted to get up to speed, speed with traceability and electronic tagging. I visited one of the largest um, cattle markets in the world, selling up to 35,000 head of prime cattle per day. The day I visited was only a small sale. They only had 10,000 head in. Two hours, all the cattle were sold. The cattle come from a 600 kilometer radius, and they were weighed on entry into this sales yard to give the buyers a guide weight for bidding. When they were sold, they were weighed on the exit. This information with price and weight was uploaded onto a database online, and it was also put onto a TV channel. They had a TV channel dedicated to the beef market, and this set the price around Argentina and South America. 
One afternoon, um, I, my meeting fell through, so I went on walkabout in Boris Aries and I cold called on the Limousine Society. Knocked on the door, there was one member of staff, opened the door, he ran the whole society. He spoke no English, I spoke no Spanish, so we had a half hour game of charades. It was unbelievable, it was the best meeting I had and I will never forget that. <laughs> so again, um, back home for Christmas, let the staff have a well-earned holiday and then off I set again, Australia. Compulsory EID since 1999. I flew into Brisbane on the 27th of January, headed north to Rockhampton, the beef capital, straight into a cyclone, 400 mils of rain. At that point, I didn't need a boat, it was Titanic. Um, in Rockhampton, I visited Gracemere Sales Yard, which was the most sophisticated auction yard that I've ever visited. Cattle um, were all handled, drove on horseback, through the whole system, they were, um, the, the yards people operated hydraulic gates, air operated gates, so they were never in beside the cattle whatsoever. So health and safety was paramount. It was fantastic um, to see this in operation. There was 14 agents worked in that yard. The local authority built the yard and the, the agents had to rent space in, in that yard to, to work. After this, I could travel no further north because of flooding, so I headed nine kilometres west to Longreach, where it got drier, drier and drier. This to me, I was told before I set off my travels, that every Nuffield scholar has a dark moment. To me, this was a dark moment, the darkest of dark moments. Um, they had no rain um, for two years. Ranchers were losing 10,000 head of cattle per day due to the drought, and there was a farmer committing suicide every three weeks. This was out of their control. This was not normal circumstances. Um, I stayed with fellow scholar James Walker in Longreach and he had set up a fodder bank um, to try and help these guys out. But um, as a Nuffield scholar, you have to go into businesses and challenge these owners. At this point, I couldn't challenge these owners. They, all they wanted was a sympathetic ear to talk to. Um, so th that was hard for me. Um, so then I travelled south through Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia and finally into Victoria, visiting ranches, vets and other auction yards on the way. I left Australia on the 14th of February and flew to New Zealand, Auckland. Um, in Auckland I had meetings arranged with um, hardware manufacturers, tag manufacturers. To me this is the capital around the world where all the hardware and tag manufacturing and inventing is done. These guys were really at the forefront. After I had these, these meetings, I headed south, uh, again calling on abattoirs, um, ranches, farmers, where I ended up in Wellington and managed to get f a meeting with four MPs, with the Minister of Agriculture and three other MPs. This was a really interesting meeting for me. All these MPs were farmers in their own right, so they were making policies and making the system work for New Zealand farmers. They had a handle on what was going on in the ground, they had a handle on what was going on in Parliament. Then I headed um, south over on the Picton Ferry to South Island. I spent most of my time on dairy farms at this point and these guys were at the forefront in technology using electronic identification. As a cow entered the rotary platform, her EID was tag, tag was scanned. The person who was milking was informed of the data of that cow if there was a problem with the cow, that problem or data was referred through a loudspeaker to the person on the milking platform. For example, if a cow was only milking on three quarters, the person there got informed only to put the clusters on three correct quarters. If the cow had antibiotics, he was informed to dump the milk. Um, so all the data collected during each milking could be relayed directly to the farm computer and be analysed by the herd manager or farmer. And then, back home, back to reality. Out of all the countries I visited during my study, to, uh, we have the best cattle traceability system in the world, but at a high cost. No other country I visited had lifetime traceability like we do have here. The current system includes the BCMS database, which holds details of all the cattle in the UK. In my opinion, farmers need to be able to get more from this database. For example, kill data, such as weight, grades, which would allow us, they should be uploaded at the time of slaughter. 
So that information is there for us as producers, farmers, to benchmark ourselves against other producers. In Scotland, Scott EID was set up to record all the sheep EID movement. But now it has expanded and it's developed a BVD database which allows anyone access to find out the BVD health status of any individual animal or a whole herd. <clears throat> the benefits of using EID, um, it makes working with cattle a more pleasurable, pleasurable job. It's not a chore. You can data capture all the information there. You can um, record um, all the information. If you can't record it, you can't measure it. It takes out the human error of reading tags manually. It speeds up the whole process. In turn, it will hopefully make your staff, your animals, everybody more efficient. What has, my, what has Nuffield done for us? Since um, coming home, we've started a trial with Scott EID. All of our breeding stock and 2014 progeny have been tagged with ultra-high frequency tags. Um, ultra-high frequency tags, you don't have to have been behind bars to be electronically tagged. Everybody in here, including myself, that hold a current UK passport is electronically tagged with a high frequency chip in it. That stores all the data that's on that passport. Same applies for these tags. We can store all the data on these high frequency tags, cattle passports. So, in my opinion, paper passports could be abolished. All the data could be um, stored on, on, the date, on the tags. Uh, as of the 1st of October, the tax disc went electronic with an approximate savings of 10 mil million per annum to the taxpayer. What could we save if we got rid of paper passports? Another thing we've tried to develop in our business is um, barcode labelling. In um, New Zealand, when I was in a wool shed, they were printing out barcode labels to go on wool packs. We are a member of the Premium Health Scheme. We blood sample animals annually, and we, I want a barcode label to be printed out where that animal is on the crush and red and um, labelled on the test tube. It takes out the human error, speeds up the whole process. Another thing um, that has helped me as well, I've started selling the hardware from New Zealand that I saw out there. And finally, a big thank you to my wife Jacqueline, who ran the farm for 11 weeks on her own without me being there. So Nuffield has benefited her as well. It was a learning experience for her back home. <laughs> thank you. And also to my two boys, Andrew and Harry, for keeping mum right. Thank you very much.